Welcome to Oakhurst Presbyterian Church, USA. We're not perfect people, but we are people of God. Won't you come? Won't you join us for our call to worship? Come just as you are. Open the door and walk through. Come. Bring yourself, all of you, Come, all of you, come. Bring your thoughts, bring your feelings, bring your pain, bring your joy, bring your mistakes, bring your anxiety, bring your fear, bring your suffering, bring your life, bring your love, bring your family, bring your hopes, bring your inequities, bring your grief, Bring your weariness, bring your passions, bring your work, bring your education, bring your expectations, bring your desires, bring your dreams, bring your plans, bring your money, bring your possessions, bring your understanding, bring your theology, bring your requests, bring your mind, bring your heart, bring your soul. Stop. Stop. Be still and know that God is God. Be still and know that God is God. Be still and know that God is God. Please join us in our opening hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Welcome.
let's face it, we don't always get it right. But we are confessional people because we are human. In our humanity, we mess up intentionally and unintentionally. We miss the mark and fall short of God's desires for our lives. So we come. We come to ask forgiveness. We come seeking God's light. We come because we love. Would you join us in our prayer of confession? Holy One, we come knowing that to enrich me will not diminish your fullness. All your loving kindness is in your Son. I bring him to you in the arms of faith. I urge his saving name as the one who died for me. I plead his blood to pay for my debts of wrong. Accept his worthiness for my unworthiness, his sinlessness for my transgression, his purity for my uncleanness, his sincerity for my guile, his truth for my deceits, his meekness for my pride, his constancy for my backslidings, his love for my enmity, his fullness for my emptiness, his faithfulness for my treachery, his obedience for my lawlessness, his glory for my shame, his devotedness for my waywardness, his holy life for my unchaste ways, his righteousness for my dead works, his death for my life. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn? Certainly not we ourselves, but we serve a forgiving God. Thanks be to God. So it is in that name, that sweet and precious name of Jesus, that we all are forgiven. Amen and amen. Please join us in our prayer for illumination.
Listen for the word of God from the book of 1 Samuel. Now the people of Beth Shemesh were harvesting wheat in the valley. When they looked up and saw the chest that had been stolen by the Philistines, they were overjoyed at the sight. The cart entered the field belonging to Joshua of Beth Shemesh and stopped right by a large stone. They chopped up the wood of the cart and offered the cows as an entirely burned offering to the Lord. The Levites unloaded the Lord's chest and the box that was with it that contained all the gold items, and they set them on the large stone. That very day, the people of Beth Shemesh offered entirely burned offerings and made sacrifices to the Lord. When the five Philistine rulers witnessed this, they went straight back to Ekron. These are the gold tumors that the Philistines returned as compensation offering for the Lord. One for Ashdod, one for Gaza, one for Ashkelon, one for Gat, and one for Ekron. The gold mice matched the number of Philistine cities belonging to the five rulers, from fortified cities to country villages. And the large stone they set the Lord's chest on is a witness even now in the field that belongs to Joshua of Beth Shemesh. But God struck down some of the people from Beth Shemesh because they looked into the Lord's chest. God struck 70 people and the community grieved because the Lord had struck them so severely. The people of Beth Shemesh said, who can stand before the Lord, this holy God? Where can God go that is away from us here? They sent messengers to the inhabitants of kiriath Jerim. The Philistines returned with the chest, they said, come down and take it back with you. So the people of kiriath Jerim came and took the Lord's chest. They brought it to Abinadab's house, which was on the hill. Then they dedicated Eleazar, Abinadab's son, to care for the Lord's chest. Now a long time passed, a total of 20 years, after the chest came to stay in kiriath Jerim, And the whole house of Israel yearned for the Lord. Yeah. 
grace and peace through God, our creator, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit. Would you pray with me? Creator God, as you, your Son, and your Spirit are one, we honor you on this day. God, we come to you with questions, concerns, struggles, victories, joys, and all those things that you allow us to experience. We offer you thanksgiving, O Lord, on this day. Dear Lord, as we struggle through this text today, we ask that you would guide us, guide our hearts and our minds. And dear Lord, as I've been the one chosen to bring forth this word today, I ask that you would hide me behind the cross so that the only thing that is seen and heard is of you and your glory. In the matchless name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning again. As you see, I've had to change my scenery today. This is a very, very difficult text. This is the first time in my almost 12 years of preaching that something very strange happened. I asked Katie and Jordan to read the text for us. Katie's immediate response was, this is a difficult text. I got an email from Dr. Lisa late Monday night and she said, Pastor, this text, I'm coming up empty. Do you have any suggestions? Dr. Lisa never comes up empty, ever. In two different conversations with Pastor Heather, who will bring forth the children's message today. She said, Amantha, where are you going with this text? This is a difficult text. And as I looked at the text myself, I'm like, oh my goodness. I said, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm just struggling this week and having a difficult time and I just need to change my scenery. And I talked to my coach and she said, yeah, maybe you need to change your scenery. So here I sit today. I've changed my scenery. And guess what? This text is still difficult. We're continuing on in our, in our series with 1 Samuel. Tim McNitch, who will be joining us as our temporary youth director, by the way, thanks be to God, has chosen our texts for this series So I dared not change it, but indeed struggle with it. So very often in life when we are struggling with things, as many of us are today, sometimes we just need to change our scenery and offer up a different type of offering to our Lord and Savior, perhaps a burnt offering. So what do we learn in this text today? Last week, we talked about the ark and how it was in places that it shouldn't have been. And the folks were struggling, wreaked havoc on the places where the ark had been taken. They talked about Ekron, Ashdod, Gaza, Ashkelon, Gath. The Philistines had taken it everywhere. What are we hearing? The ark changed its scenery a few times before it got to its proper place. We're going through a lot as a people right now. The racial tensions are at an all-time high. We've lost 
tremendous leaders over the past few weeks. And leadership can't even acknowledge the great contributions. That's where we are as a people. We're hurting because we're losing loved ones. And we can't run to them and embrace them as we normally do. But we are still sharing love the best way we know how. We're thankful for our Zoom calls and our meetings, but it has caused a tremendous amount of stress. Why? Because our ark has been moved. Our ark of safety has been moved. Our arc of peace has been moved. Our arc of stability has been moved. We can't come to Oakhurst every Sunday and worship at 11 o'clock. We can't pass out our green sheets and pray for each individual. That's difficult. We can't hear and see the joyful faces of the choir. Our ark has been moved. But one of the things we are challenged with as Christians is to keep that ark right here, to keep that ark of safety in our hearts. And that's often difficult when it's not where we think it should be. But we can't be like the Philistines. We have to be the Israelites we're called to be. I moved to, to verse 19 here where the descendants of Jeconiah did not rejoice with the people of Beth Shemesh. We talked about Beth Shemesh last week the sun, the house of the rising sun. You know, we're a Jesus people. When we think of the rising sun, we may spell that S-U-N-S-O-N because we are a resurrection people. But they did not rejoice. They had not had a good experience. They were still carrying a little ick from the past. Sometimes we can carry some things from yesterday that cause us heaviness in today and not allow us to flourish the way God wants us to flourish. Sometimes we can get so caught up in something that happened 10, 12, 15, 20 years ago that we can't enjoy what's right here in our midst. I remember a long time ago, Dolly Parton recorded a song in her sweet little voice and she said, yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus. Tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. I loved Dolly Parton as a child. Loved, loved, loved her because all of her songs told a story. And that one was no different. Yesterday is gone. And even in our time of COVID, since the middle of March, we've been in a different place. Our ark has been moved. But yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus. But our people here in our text could not even rejoice. As good as God has been to us, our few months of inconvenience has been met with complaints, with sadness, depression, uncertainty, anger, unemployment, 
reduced wages, a movement of the ark. And it's hard to rejoice. But we, as a people of God, must rejoice. Must rejoice. It says in our text, in the scriptures, it talks about the 10,000 tongues. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't praise God enough for what God has done. And we have to find joy even in our struggles. When our ark has been moved, we must find a place, a time, a new, sur a new surrounding to rejoice. We must. We are reminded that God is God. God is God every day. God is God in sadness. God is God in joy. God is God in the day and God is God at night. But we must still bring our offering, our offering of self. And our text talks about a burnt offering. What happens when something burns? It disintegrates. It goes to ashes. Some things we need to let go. Some things we need to take to the point of ashes so that we may grow into what God is calling us to be. The people mourned because the Lord had made a great slaughter among the people. God has a way of getting our attention. God has a way of saying, I am still in control. I don't care what you see on television. I don't care what you read on the internet. I don't care what you hear on your radio. I don't care what you see on your cell phones. I am still God. Rejoice. God is still on the throne. So they sent messengers to the inhabitants of Kiriath Jerim, saying, The Philistines have returned the ark of the Lord. Come down and take it up to you. Kiriath Jerim, city of forests. City of forests. We've all heard you can't see the forest for the trees. Sometimes we have to stop and look around. Look at each and every tree in the forest because it wouldn't be a forest if it didn't have all of the beautiful trees. Each tree is different. Each bark pattern is different. Every leaf is different. The height of each tree is different. The fruit it bears is different. Just like us, we are a forest. But we must stop and look at each individual. We must see each individual. No tree in the forest is greater than another. If you start weeding the, 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 the trees, it's no longer a forest. The forest is beautiful. It's green. It produces oxygen for us to breathe. It produces what we need, but the forest is made of a multiplicity of trees, just like God designed us. When you look at your sibling, those you know, those you don't, those you love and those you don't, 
those that get on your nerves and those that don't. Those you trust and those you don't. All part of the forest. And only God is the judge. One thing I know, especially sitting where I'm sitting, if we just listen, we hear beautiful, beautiful sounds coming from each member of the forest, even the rustling in the trees. Our service went a little bit differently today because I wanted to invite you in. You don't see a lot of faces in worship today. We have to listen and decide for ourselves what offering are we going to bring. Yes, we need monetary offerings because that's the society in which we live. But we also need offerings of self. We need offerings of minds, of souls, of resources. Ministry is still going on even in the time of COVID. You can contribute to the community in which we live. You can listen, you can touch, you can give because every tree in the forest is important as the next. It said, and the people of Kerioth Jerim came and took up the ark of the Lord and brought it to the house of Abinadab on the hill they consecrated his son, Eleazar, to have charge of the ark of the Lord. I love that text because the Hebrew hides some beautiful realities. Kiriath Jerim, city of forests. We've already talked about that. And took it to the house of Abinadab. Abinadab, the house of of my father is noble and consecrated. That's what Abinadab means. The house of my father is noble. The house of God is noble. And consecrated his son, Eleazar. Eleazar, what does that mean? Consecrated or ordained, God has helped. God has helped. That's where we are as a people today. God is helping us to make it each and every day. It's not easy. And we are offering every day something different. It's constantly changing and we like things to stay the same way. The last thing we want is change. Just admit it. The last thing we want to do is change. But without change, there's no growth. Our ark has been moved, no doubt. But we are still the people of God. We are still the people of God. So I ask you today, friends and family, what things do you need to lay on the altar of God and the sacrifice? What things need to be burnt today so that you may be a better disciple of Christ? Is it something you're carrying from the past? Is it a relationship? Is it a lost job? Is it a bad relationship with parents? Is it a bad relationship with your children? Is it something you said that you should not have said that you need to make amends for? Is it a relationship that needs to be fixed with someone you are with right now? Not necessarily a romantic relationship, but a working relationship. Your co-workers, 
your fellow church members. What inside do you need to lay on the offering, on the ark, on the, on the sacrificial place today to free yourself, to put that ark back where it belongs, which is with God, our creator, and free our hearts to serve with gladness, with joy, with love, with creativity, with power, with strength. What are we going to sacrifice today? What are we going to give up today? We cannot receive if our hands are closed, if our hearts are closed. What preconceived notions do we need to give up today? Everyone is unique and special and is a loved child of God. What type of tree are you going to be in the forest of Oakhurst, of Decatur, of Georgia, of the United States of America today? We have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to be absolutely wonderful in the Lord. Won't you take that step today? Won't you open your hearts and put down those things that keep you from being joyful in the Lord and rejoice in the Lord? Amen and amen. If you are looking for a church home today, yes, we're virtual, but we are here for you. Pastor Heather and I are still conducting new members classes. We want you to be a part of this church family. If you're interested in becoming a member of Oakhurst, please email us, email us at newmember at oakhurstpresbyterian.org. Newmember at oakhurstpresbyterian.org. You are welcomed here. You are gifted. And this is a place for you to share your gifts today. Welcome. We've come to the time in our service where it's time to give back a portion, just a portion of what God has given to us. We have been so richly blessed. And even during this time of pandemic, many of you have been so supportive. You've kept up your promise, your covenant, your pledge, and we say thank you. Without your financial support of the mission and ministry at Oakhurst, we could not do the work that must be done. So we ask that you give now and give generously during this time. You may give online at oakhurstpcusa.org forward slash give. You may give using PayPal at oakhurstpcusa at gmail.com or you may give by cash app dollar sign oakhurstpcusa or Snail mail still works. The address of the church is 118 2nd Avenue, Decatur, Georgia, 30030. Thank you for your gifts. And after you have given of your tithe and offering, we ask that you go to the chat box and share the peace of Christ. Email somebody, text somebody, Greet one another with the love of Jesus Christ.
today. We know that you have multiple services that you may join on Sunday morning, but we are here as a family of believers fighting for justice, seeking the right, the good. We are Oakhurst. We look forward to seeing you on tomorrow evening at seven o'clock when we will talk about the protests and share our experiences. On Wednesday night, we have a time of prayer and sharing, and on Thursday morning at 10.30, a time of prayer. On Saturday, we have Sunday school, Christian education, and on Sunday morning as well. You may learn about all of these things, all of the details at Oakhurst pcusa.org. Again, thank you for worshiping with us today. Stay tuned for the youth worship service immediately following this service. There's one thing left for us to do, and that is to go out and serve the Lord with gladness. So now may the presence of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen.